Yeah, welcome to today's exercise about temporal difference learning. Um, we will once more look at the racetrack environment, which was introduced in the last exercise. This time around, so as you're probably already familiar with the first part of this, just some imports, and here we build our race racetrack. It, this time around, the racetrack is this uh, full, I would say, circular racetrack. Last time we only had like half of this track in the first exercises. So yeah, in the first task of this exercise, we will once more um, do policy evaluation, this time with uh, TD methods. So to do policy evaluation, um, we first need to define yeah our policy that we want to evaluate. In this case, we, we once again have a yeah, rather slow um, policy that just goes around the, the, the outer walls. So from the starting line, it just goes right until it goes, comes to the roll, then down, and yeah, you can see where it goes in this, in this image here. So yeah, he, again, this policy is not optimal because it does not go as, as fast, and also um, this is not the shortest path to take through this, through this racetrack. Nevertheless, we want to evaluate how, how good it is, or rather how good each state is when, when we're using the policy. And this time around, we will do so by do using a TD-based, so temporal difference-based method. Okay, maybe this to give a little introduction once more to TD-based methods. Um, yeah, the, the, there's the big difference to Monte Carlo methods, which we already know is that uh, TD-based methods act on like a step-by-step -step basis. So we're just doing a single step and we learn from that single step and then we do another step and learn from that step. That's TD methods. For Monte Carlo, as you remember, we wrote out the whole episode and then learned from that whole episode. And let's let's have a look at this at the um, update functions, update um, formulas up here. Um, up in the upper line, we have the Monte Carlo update where we have the actual return from a specific episode which we use um, for the update. And the main difference now in TD learning is uh, in TD zero is that um, we are just having a single step and we still want an estimate of, of a return. And yeah, we we get that by oh, by uh, bootstrapping, um, which means that we use already um, old estimates that we've already done to yeah um, go to the yeah like uh, evaluate or like get an estimate of of future of the of the rest of the episode more or less or the rest of the task. So we actually sample the return. And we use that and we add to it this, uh, the, the discounted state value of the follow-up state. And this thing, this addition here, these two, these two terms together yeah, are our estimate for the actual return. Oh, okay, if you really think about it, the state value is an, e an estimate for the um, expected return. And in Monte Carlo, we just say, okay, the return that we have sampled from our, from our episode um, is the closest to we can get and then td methods we just say okay we're we not actually we let uh, to approximate the expected return and we can do this addition here where we use the reward and the um, expected return the discounted expected return from the next state yeah so the reward plus this discounted um uh, state value of the next state re replace the return i mean this is the most important difference between the two approaches. So let's get into the code and see how, it, how you can implement this. It's actually rather simple, I would say, the, the functions. So let's have a look. First off, we have a little bit of um, visualization helper functions, which are not so important, I think. Then we have our interact function and the learn function, which we will look will be looking at uh, in a second. First, let's look at the main loop. So as we're doing policy evaluation, so we need our state value estimates, which we um, introduce to zero initially. We have our discount factor, which is one in this case, so it does not discount. Yeah, this is a 
um, we have alpha, this is our learning rate. And then we have some yeah, track initialization. This is for the visualization. We are running for 250 episodes. And now we come to the main loop over here. So the, the main loop um, over the episodes is in the um, pseudocode. It's this J loop over here. Um, yeah, and, and what we do is we initialize the state to x0, and then we run through the episode. And in the episode, we always yeah, we do the interaction step. Then we check, like actually this interaction step is pretty much as you as we've already seen. Um, yeah, we put in our policy, we put in the current state, and then um, here we have the implementation. So based on the on the state, the policy decides what action to take. We transform the integer valued um, action to the tuple, which is just specific for this environment. We take that action, throw it into the environment, and then we get the next state, the reward, whether termination or truncation has occurred, and we return all of that. That's all that there is to the interact function. It's quite simple. Um, should be very similar to what we've already seen. So we do that. We go to the next state. We check if truncation has occurred, and we do the like the um, we reset the the car to the start of the track if. Yeah, interrogation has occurred because we don't want that to happen. Um, and we want to punish the agent if something like this happens. And then we learn from, from the interaction. And yeah, I think this is actually just, it is just a one-liner because what we do is um, for the state, which we are currently in, we update the state value. And we do so by, um, yeah, we, we just use this formula here on the right which I, I've already shown above, or already talked a little bit about above. And what's, what's happening here is we just add to the um, existing state value, we just add alpha times this, um, this error value, which in this case is just the reward plus um, gamma times the state value of the next state. And that and we divide, and we, we, um, from that we take, uh, we subtract the current state value of the given state. So what is the new information that we would introduce in this step is the reward. So for the current state, we have sampled a reward. This is like the actual information. And other than that, so we also have the like the next state, but th this this um, these values which we add to um, to the reward to form the full so the estimate of the full state value are yeah, already estimates. And this is also an estimate. So essentially, most of this formula is actually estimates. And we, yeah, we introduce the reward is what, what brings the information into this. Okay, but I, I would say it's, it's quite simple, it's quite nice. And then we just have this step by step learning. Yeah. Okay, yeah, if termination occurs in the episode, we break all as before. I mean, What's, what's interesting maybe is that we actually learn while gathering, while, while running through the episode in contrast to, to uh, Monte Carlo learning. And this is just for visualization. And then one, when we run this for a bit of time, um, we get this, this, um, these, these state values. Once more, you can see, looks, so if you sanity check this, this looks good. Um, one step before the finishing line, we have a, um, a return or a state value, so an, an estimate of the expected return of minus one. Two steps before that with the policy, we have minus two. And you can just go back. And the point that's furthest away is in the, the, the upper left, like the or the topmost um, starting position, which takes 30 steps to the finishing line with the policy. Okay, so our algorithm seems to converge nicely in this case. Now that we, we've looked at um, policy evalu evaluation, let's have a look at on policy epsilon greedy control or also called um, Zaza. So Zaza is an, yeah, the, like an, an acronym for state action reward, next state, next ac action, and okay, evaluation. And um, we will we'll be looking at this now, so it's an on policy and epsilon greedy. So 
um, yeah, we, we need a, an absolute greedy policy, which we would just do by, I mean, we, we will, yeah, we will get to that in a second, maybe, but let's, let's go from it, through it from the top. Okay, for, for um, a control algorithm, um, we want to estimate the action values. Oops. And or we want to yeah we want to get es estimates of the action values. So for the expected return, um, when we're in a given state and choosing a specific action, we want to know what's the expected return yeah for that action in that state. Okay, let's maybe just go through the code and see how that's reflected or like how that connects to the pseudo code. So this is just for logging. I think actually this Q sample is not not used so. I mean, we should remove that from the from the template. Um, okay, so we have epsilon, which is our probability for choosing a random action or like an exploration explorative action. We have our discount factor, which is one in this case, of forgetting or, or learning rate, um, forgetting factor or learning rate alpha zero point five, and we are learning for five hundred episodes. And what we're trying to do here is we try to improve the, the, the dummy policy, which we have evaluated in the first task, to something that goes a bit faster. Because, as I said, there's definitely better or faster ways to go through the track. Okay. Um, yeah, here we just in, in, initialize the course, and then we go come to the main loop, like the, the J loop once more, this one here. Okay, let's see. Um, yeah, as I said, this cumulated reward and position maps, this is just logging and visualization. So what we do is we go to the first state, initialize x0, and now it gets a bit different to maybe what, what we are used to, because um, we already choose an action at this point. Yeah, and we do, we do so by asking our policy, okay, what action would you choose? Let's maybe quickly look at how the policy decides that. Also, um, very si quite similar to what we've already seen regarding epsilon greedy. So, with a probability of one minus epsilon, or if the deterministic flag is set, we just choose the greedy ap action, so the action with the highest um, action value for the given state. And with a probability of epsilon, we just choose like some some random action of the of the nine actions. Okay, this is the policy. And this is used here to decide on the first action that we want to take. Then yeah, we just transform the integer to a tuple. And this is also a little bit of a, an auxiliary thing which you do not need to do, but yeah, we do it here. We concatenate the state and the action to a single tuple. Um, this is done because it, this makes it a little bit easier to, in, uh, to, to index the action value array which I can show you in a, in a second. Okay, so, yeah, interestingly here, we before we go into the actual episode rollout, we already choose our first action. This has a little bit uh, to do with how Sasa um, yeah, works out, which I hope will, will get clearer in a second. So next we, we run through the, the episode. Yeah, we always, always update our exploration map for visualization, and then we um, take a step in the in environment using the action which we've just gotten, which we which we decided on up here. So in the, at least in the first iteration, we, we it's this action. Um, yeah, we just do do, do our, our normal step. We go to the next state, get the reward, terminate, truncate it. Truncate it is as it's always with this environment. We just um, reset the car to the finish line if we ran into a wall. <clears throat> okay, and then we already choose our next action in the loop. So before in, in other algorithms, it usually was like um, that we choose our action right before we take the step. So in, in this line above the step, we usually choose our action. Here it's a bit different because we already need to decide the next action in um, before we learn. We already need to have chosen the next action. Okay, so we all, uh, for we, we've gotten the next state and we apply our policy to this next state to to and know what we would do in the next in the next uh, state, and we then get our next action. We again we con um, we d uh, make it a tuple, and we concatenate the next state and the next action to one longer tuple. 
Okay, then we throw all of that in the learn function. Um, let's have a look at that. It's a bit of a long line here. Um, and it generally just implements this Q line, this, this long line over here. Okay, let's look at it. What we do is we um, update the uh, action value for the state action pair that we um, have chosen in the current iteration. And we do so by adding alpha times this, this error function over uh, error term over here. So this error term um, is the reward plus gamma times the action value of the next state action. So of the next, of the, of the, of the state of the next iteration and of the action of the net, next iteration. And we've already decided the action for the next iteration. So we, I mean, we essentially um, look a little bit into the future here by, um, by asking the policy or what would you do in the next state already. And this this term, this um, yeah, estimate of the action values of the current state action is then taken, and the um, yeah current estimate is subtracted from this, so the current value in the the array. So it should be quite quite straightforward. What's interesting here, and what will um, come up in the next task or the next algorithm, is that we are doing on policy here, which means that um, in this bootstrapping or in this for this next state action we actually follow the policy so the UK the UK plus one over here is something that the policy would do in this state and this is not like um, we'll come to the next algorithm and that's a bit different that's why I'm pointing this out and that's important because that's I mean that's the difference between on policy and off policy control Okay, so anyways, we, we update our, our action values in this learn function and then we um, just like increment the, 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 yeah, the iteration of the inner loop of the, of the episode loop. So we, the action for the next iteration will be what was next action in this iteration. The state for the next uh, iteration will be what next action was in this, uh, was what next state was in this uh, iteration. We can also do that with the state action pair. Um, this is not, not, not strictly not necessary. We could also just um, put that together in the next iteration. But uh, yeah, because yeah, uh, I think it's, it's clear. Okay, then we uh, add this to the accumulated reward for just for visualization. And yeah, if termination occurred, we break. Otherwise, we do the next iteration in this, in, the, in what was the next state. In, um, in this iteration. And we, we already know what action we will do in the beginning because we chose it in this iteration already for the next iteration. I mean, this is what, what's a bit interesting about the Zaza algorithm. So if you come, come in here in the next iteration, you already have the action which was chosen in the last iteration and, and used in the bootstrapping uh, update formula. Okay, yeah. For this specific case, um, the Zaza algorithm that does not perform super well. Um, okay, yeah, we have a little evaluation um, function here, which just runs some uh, bit of simulation. This was already given. Maybe maybe you had to look at it. It just runs for two hundred steps, and um, yeah, plot. We we are just looking at the result of this in a second. But maybe yeah, you can see the cumulative reward um, is still like minus five hundred. And as we have seen with the dummy policy, we could go from, from start to finish line, or it can go to like minus 500 and deeper, or, or maybe here in the better cases, maybe it comes to minus 30 somewhere. But we've already seen with the dummy policy, we could go from starting line to finish line in 30 steps. So this is definitely, I mean, it does not perform particularly well. Okay, so maybe let's look at the maps. Um, yeah. As you can see, the maps also look, don't look so good, so it does not seem to find the way very well. Okay, this is likely because the um, probability for epsilon is quite high. So we have like, I think, a 10% probability for a random action. Yeah, 10%. It's possible that this is a bit high for this specific algorithm because, I mean, maybe we, we get to that in a second why that might be a problem compared to QLearn. 
Okay, so let's go to the next task where we will be having a look at Q learning. Okay, here we have the algorithm on the right. So this is an off policy algorithm. And it's most of it. Now, yeah, okay, let's let's look at it. It's um, it has, there's a lot of parallels to 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 Zaza, but there's also some very um, important differences. Okay, so let's go down. Okay, in this case, we are defining a Q learning function, um, which is because uh, we want to run it a couple of times the Q learning algorithm, and it's just. Yeah, code more efficient code-wise to have a function for it. Otherwise, we would have to copy it a few times. So down here we have our what what was otherwise our main loop. So here we just ca call this uh, Q learning function to get our action values and accumulated rewards. Um, epsilon is again 0 0.1, so 10% for random action. Um, discount factor of one. Uh, alpha, so the forgetting factor or learning rate of 0 0.5. Again, 500. Um, learning episodes, yeah, and then um, it initializing the course, and then we run this Q learning function, which we look at now. It's rather straightforward, I would say. Um, this is just some, yeah, getting the course out of the track, out of the environment, and we we I think this is just used for visualization, as far as I can tell. And then we have um, our action value initialization, alt zero in this case. And then here we run through the outer loop, through the episode loop. Um, yeah, visual this is again logging and visualization. We reset to the initial state, and then we run through the uh, we like we go through the episode <laughs> once more. I, I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot with this, but this is also just the visualization map. And then yeah, we yeah we run through the episode. And we, in this case, we once again have our interact um, function. So at this point, let's look into it. So what we're doing here is we decide on an action using our policy. We can actually reuse the policy which we defined um, in the policy, um, which we defined in the first task. Oh, no, wait. I uh, know we can, um, uh, yeah, we can reuse the policy from the second task here. Oh, sorry. Um, we can reuse the policy from the second task here because the policy for or the way the the this policy here or the the behavior policy. So the policy that interacts with the environment is used is is it identical for Zaza in Q learning? So we can just reuse that here. Um, but in this case, we once again choose the action directly when we also interact with the environment if, uh, yeah, directly before that. And that is because we, in this case, we do not need to, um, we do not need to know the next action in the current, um, in the current iteration. So it's enough if we know the current action. Okay, so we get the next state, the reward, terminated, truncated, and we also need the action um, in the update step. Truncation, as we already know, reset to the starting line. Okay, then let's have a look at the learning, which is the most interesting. Um, thing because otherwise, yeah. uh, apart from the learning, we just yeah, increment the, um, the 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 episode loop. We do some logging of the rewards and we terminate if we reach the finish line. Although we break the loop if we reach the finish line. Okay, so the learning is what's actually interesting here, and especially what's different to um, to the Zaza algorithm. Okay, so here we have our learning learning um, update function which is this, the Q, this long line over here. And the main difference that I want to point out is that we are not, yeah, we don't, we do not know which action will be chosen in the next step. Instead, we take the maximum operator over here or like here. So what this means is that we do not directly follow our policy in, in, for the update here. So the bootstrapping is not done using the actual policy because the actual, the actual policy has this epsilon thing in it. So in the actual policy, it is possible that we choose some random action by chance. For This is what, what, Q, uh, what Zaza does. Zaza has to, like, it is possible that the next action in Zaza is actually the random action. 
So it would also, um, in this update function from, from Zaza, maybe if we go back, so in, in this update, it is possible that UK plus one is a random action, just an explorative action. And then it would also, in the update, it would also be, um, the random action would also occur. So also be taken. For queue learning, this is not possible. For queue learning, we always take the greedy action. We always take the, yeah, the what we think is the best action um, for the bootstrapping. This does not mean that we always apply the best actions. This just means that in the update, in the bootstrapping, we always um, evaluate the follow-up state with the best, the best possible case for the follow-up state, essentially. Um, I, hope, I hope this gets somewhat clear. Otherwise, please ask in the, in the chat or in the forum, and maybe we can have a little chat about this once more. I think I, maybe the best case to um, to understand this is actually the the cliff walking example in the uh, in the lecture notes or in the bar and sudden book. I think there it gets quite clear what what the difference is. Um, so I, I would say the difference. So maybe to to just break it down once more, the main difference is that it, um, Zaza worries about the 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 potential. Um, random action that could occur when designing the action values while queue learning does not. And I, I guess there's a lot of arguments for and against this. Um, but I generally, so, so um, yeah, yeah, maybe that's fine. Maybe if you, if you have further questions on this, please just, just ask about it. Okay, so yeah, that's the update function. As I said, main difference is this max operator. We always um, consider the best possible next ac action for the, uh, in the in the bootstrapping. Okay, now um, through this, there's this maximization bias that occurs, which is generally not a problem when we have um, deterministic environments uh, uh, such as here. So or maybe, yeah, that's the next task. So maybe let's look at the results from this. You can see it looks pretty good. So we get quite close to, I think, minus, minus, yeah, my, okay, I, you can't really tell from this graph, but we could look at it maybe. Ah, okay, uh, what, uh, okay, let's just look at the, at the evaluation of the policy. Okay, yeah, here you can see the, the starting policy would go like all the way to the wall and just go around at the other walls. And the policy which we have here actually speeds up, goes multiple steps at a time and takes like a closer closer loop. It's closer to the middle. So it looks pretty good, like a pretty good um, improvement upon the, the dummy policy. Here we have a few starting, you know, like the, the different starting positions, randomly sampled. Okay, yeah, and now we get to the, to the to what I was already teasing about like a second ago. Um, like for for deterministic environments, Q learning is good and well, um, but for stochastic environments, it can perform worse because um, we have this maximization bias, and this is what we have uh, double Q learning for, which tries to um, yeah get around that issue a little bit. So the main difference here is that we have two um, arrays of or two tab tablet yeah, tables of uh, action values, and let's see how. Uh, okay, yeah. So yeah, we also get a little bit of a different environment here. We have this, which is a bit stochastic, and the the reward can be a bit stochastic. So we we change our environment and our reward a little bit. So when we accelerate into the direction of corner we can randomly get minus one or one for this action as a reward. Oh, oh wait, uh, no, we get a random reward for it. This one's not, not true that it's randomly minus one or one. We get a random, we get a random reward whenever we accelerate into the corner. Um, I would have to look up what the exact value is for this, but it's not so, not uh, super important here, I think. Okay, so what we do now is first we take our Q-learning algorithm, which we've already implemented. So this function here, and we throw that at the stochastic environment. 
for four repetitions. And we, yeah, here we have the um, mean accumulated, uh, accumulated reward for this. Seems to still perform um, quite well. Here we can see what this looks like. So this is still Q learning. Seems to, yeah, seems to be performing quite well still. And then let's have a look at, oh, there's a lot of, okay. So this is 10, 10 examples here. Okay, so let's, let's have a look at the WQ learning example. Okay, maybe let's first go to the main loop um, over here. So as I said, the main difference, we have two action value estimates, uh, two action value, yeah, two action value estimates here. And yeah, we go to the, to the main ep loop of the episodes. We have some logging visualization. We reset our state to the initial state and then we roll out the episode or we, yeah, we go through the episode. We update our map for visualization and then we, here we have our interact, interact function. And we can actually reuse the intact function from before. Um, the main difference here is that we have to add the two estimates here for the to get the action value uh, estimates for the policy. So, so for the policy which we want to follow. In the um, in the pseudocode, you can see this over here that we just add the action value estimates for the um, yeah for the for the policy. Okay, then. Yeah, normal trun truncation behavior as we've already discussed. Um, and then here we have the learning function, which is uh, the, the, where it gets a little bit inst interesting again. Okay, so let's have a look at it. It's implemented over here. And yeah, we have this, yeah, here we, we just put the state and action together and then with a, with a 50% uh, probability, we um, run this code. And then with 50% probability, we run the other part of the code. And the two are essentially uh, quite similar. The main difference is that the um, role of, of the two, of like Q1 and Q2 change. So Q1 would be action values one and Q2 would be action values two. The role of this, the two uh, like swaps the two with 50% chance. And this is what we can see in like this block over here. Okay, so um, maybe we can have a look what exactly happens here. So this is essentially the the typical Q-learning update, which we've seen with the exception that this Q2 argmax Q1 is here. So instead of simply applying um, what the, so so in, in Q-learning we applied what the um, actual value estimate said would be the best the Q value of the best action in the bootstrapping for the next state. Here we do something which is a little bit different. So we essentially, we ask Q1, so the action values which we actually want to update, what what it, what this um, estimate, uh, what, what the best, um, what is the best action given this estimate? And then instead of using the actual Q value of this estimate, uh, of this of this action, we use that. Um, we use we, we put that action into the estimate of the other of Q two of the other estimate of the, of the other estimate. So the action is chosen by Q one, but the action value is given by Q two. And then we do bootstrapping. So we update Q one with the Q value estimate of Q two, <laughs> where the action was given by Q one. So it's a bit. If you're, if, you're, if you're talking about it, it's a bit confusing maybe, but if you look into the code it, or into the math, it actually should be should be understandable. And then for the other case with 50% chance, we do it is the other way around. So maybe let's one more once more look into the math because may, maybe then it gets a little bit clearer. So here, over here, we choose the action which we want to um, consider in the bootstrapping. And we do so by choosing the action which is the best action um, with respect to the Q1 estimate. Then we use this action and throw it into the Q2 estimate to give us the um, action value which we use in the bootstrapping. And then for the second case, it's just... So for the second 50% Q2 
case it just it's just the other way around okay yeah that's actually so this way um 50 percent of the time we want we uh, learn q1 50 percent of the time we learn q2 and it's a bit inter interwebbed and this is all there is to it actually and then we get out extra values one extra values two and we just run through through the episodes with this Okay, here we have the, the code for um, applying this WQ learning. And yeah, if we look at the mean cumulated rewards, we can actually see it does not perform uh, so much better in this case. Uh, I have to admit, it would probably be nicer if we had an example here which um, where WQ learning works better. Um, it is likely that yeah, the stochastic effect of this um, environment is not so... Um, the effect of this is not so big so that uh, maybe it's that if something random occurs and you like do a little wrong move or something like this the 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 repercussions of this is fairly small so it would be worse i think i mean it's i'm not 100 percent certain on this but i think it would be worse if the effect um would be like if you would let like a big snowballing effect if you do something wrong. I think then um, WQ learning might be better. Okay, so yeah, we should probably update that in the future. Okay, let's have a look at, nevertheless, let's have a look at the what WQ learning learned. So here we have the, um, what it runs through. It seems to perform a little bit worse or si maybe a little, kind of similar to, to, to Q learning. Um, for this specific environment, so I mean, it's not it's not bad. It's just that learning seems to be a little bit unstable compared to Q learning in this case, and also yeah, like learning two Q net uh, two Q uh, tables just takes more memory, double the memory for for the Q values, and also it takes more time because you um, sometimes you learn the first Q one, sometimes you learn Q two. So yeah, this would be an example. Where Q learning suffices, but there are examples where WQ learning performs a lot better. Yeah. Okay. So that would be the run through through the tasks. If you have any questions, you can feel free to ask them also in the chat or in the forum. Um, yeah. If there's no questions, I would say thank you for your attention and see you next time.